USDA said that it's concerned the rules will right there folks it comes to the money so Hello, this is Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm your chef on a mission. Today's mission is organic. Organic, organic. We all know how important it is to support organic. Well, is all organic the same? And is some of organic a scam is the question. Um, I think there's a lot of organic scams out there that are totally legit because it comes from the USDA and the USDA says that you can do this. So let's check out this, this recent article. USDA withdraws welfare rules for animals certified as organic. They're withdrawing the welfare rules for certified organic animals. So if you're buying certified organic beef, how are they being treated? How do they live? Your certified organic chicken, does it ever have access to the pasture? Does it ever have access to grass? Can it ever see sunlight? These are the questions when it comes to animal welfare. How, how are they being packed in a barn? Um, what is free range or, or free roaming considered? So, the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced its plans to withdraw the final rules which were originally set to take effect on March 20th after being delayed three times. USDA said the rules exceed agency statutory authority under the Organic Food Protection Act of 1990 to issue annual animal welfare regulations. <sighs> the agency called the rules which govern the animal's access to outdoor space, transportation, and slaughter, among other things, broadly prescriptive. Under the rules, producers and handlers participating in the National Organic Program stipulate that poultry must be housed in spaces that are big enough for the birds to move freely, stretch their rings, stand normally, and engage in natural behaviors. Livestock, meanwhile must be provided access to outdoor space year-round and kept in indoor pens that are sufficiently large, solidly built, and comfortable so that the animals are kept clean, dry, and free of lesions. USDA said that it's concerned the rules will stunt innovation and growth of the organic industry. Right there, folks, it comes to the money. So, when you're buying organic, and when you think you're buying organic, you imagine your animals having access to outdoors, having enough room, having enough room not to have lesions. These are all simple things that when you picture, when you take the picture of organic, and a lot of people confuse the, the term organic and they think in their mind like your local farmer that's right down at the farmer's market, and the local farm across the street, down the road, that has cows out in grass pastures. Folks, that's really not the reality of a lot of mainstream organic. Big organic companies don't have the means to be able to do stuff like that. Now, of course, a lot of them do, but many of them don't. Many of them. So, in 1999, I was I was um, nominated for the Organic Board, Organic Standards Board, um, and I moved to New York. And I was told by somebody very well known in the organic industry that Marcus, you'll you'll never get past the nomination. It was nice that you're nominated. It's nice that the folks in Colorado, the Department of Agriculture there. It's nice that all of those people. Thought thought that you knew what you were doing and this, but they go, you'll never get you'll never get on to the board. And I said, why is that? And they go, because the board is run by corporate America. It's run by corporations. It's run by big business that dictate what the rules they want it to be. They go, you know what you know how an, an organic animal should be raised. You know how an organic whatever should be raised. But to them. The way that they need to raise it and produce it is much different than your way that you want it to be raised. The way that they want it to be raised is so it fits you know, a million acres, a million cases, a million bottles. They need to be able to produce drastic numbers. And so for example, did you know when you buy organic chickens in the store, that uh, those organic chickens are sprayed with chlorine. Now, one of the companies out there says, well, we have organic chickens that aren't soaked, that aren't, you know, that aren't soaked. Yeah, so the, their chickens are air dried, they're hung up, and then they're sprayed with chlorine there. There's no way around producing chickens, or very, very little way around producing chickens on a mass level, where you can get away with not spraying them with chlorine. Uh, it's just what happens, you have to kill bacteria. Um, Murray's chicken, incidentally, they use electrolysis water, which is a very low, um, low pH water. I'm not sure the exact pH, three, four, I'm not sure, but that will kill bacteria as well. So it's the opposite of alkaline water. It's electrolysis water. 
the chickens are indeed soaked they're not air dried um, some chefs say, well, I only, I only support air-dried chickens and this and that, but they're still sprayed with chlorine, folks. There's still stuff on there. If they didn't spray those chickens with some kind of chemical or some kind of something to kill off the bacteria, you couldn't buy a commercially produced organic chicken. An organic chicken would only come from the guy down the road who you know that's raising 30 chickens, 100 chickens, 200 chickens, but he doesn't have the, the capacity to produce and provide a grocery store. He just has the capacity to go to a farmer's market do his own community supported agriculture project and sell to 100 families for the year. And, but the, the big corporations don't want that folks. The big corporations want their product with an organic stamp, an organic logo on it, an organic seal of approval in every grocery store across the country. And you have to cut corners. So me, being a chef who's really cared about the, caring about my food in 1999, who's gung-ho, is, is an obstacle, is a major obstacle for these corporations so there's no way that i would really at the final final of it uh, the finale of it be able to sit there next to purdue and tell the guy at purdue well your chickens aren't organic buddy your your beef isn't organic that's not why you raise organic carrots by monocropping you know 25,000 acres and planting carrots year after year after year they don't want something like that tell them they want to say hey they want to go to the USDA and say, hey, we're going to do organic chicken, and this is what we need to do to put an organic seal of approval on it or slap that label on it. And that's the reality of big corporate organic, folks. Um, now, I'm not saying don't support big corporate organic. I'm saying, first and foremost, you want to support your local farmer. A lot of local farmers are not certified organic, and don't worry. They don't need to be. They're not stupid enough to spray harmful chemicals on a lot of this stuff. Some of them are, but a lot of them are not. A lot of them are very proud of what they're doing. A lot of them are doing other things like integrative pest management, where they don't have to spray as many chemicals. It's no spray, low spray, different types of spray, different types of things to, to remedy the problem that a bigger organic or a bigger um, conventional farm would have. And certain crops just require more spray, like corn. Corn is very hard uh, not to be able to have more chemicals going into it. Florida tomatoes, folks. Um, not saying that a Florida tomato is the right tomato to, to support, but um, it grows in sand. It needs tons and tons of fertilizers and chemicals because it's in sandy soil. There's no nutrients. There's nothing. So, first and foremost, go to your local farmer, farmer's market, farm, ask questions, find out about the food, find out what they're doing, um, join a community supported agriculture, which most community supported agricultures are organic, organic minded, they're very conscious. <coughs> They'll just keep delivering you food for months of what's in season at that specific time, which is really great because you'll have your greens, you'll, in the spring, you'll have your broccoli, your bok choy, all that throughout the summer. Um, in the fall time, you might get your squashes, you might get some dried beans, you might get things like that um, to carry you through the winter. Storage crops like potatoes, garlic uh, after July 4th, that's really a great way to go. Now, if you do go into a store, if you do walk into a mainstream grocery store and you're going to buy beef, you're going to buy ground beef, then you definitely want to pick up, if they don't have local, you definitely want to pick up the or national brand of organic ground beef. Because believe it or not, it's better than the beef that's not certified organic. So you have to make a choice there of what beef is better to buy. The national conventional or the national organic. Even though you know the national organic now after watching this video may be a scam. That organic chicken may not be a real true organic chicken. You're still paying for a company, a farm, somewhere down the line, you're still paying for somebody to make a step in the right direction. It may be a small baby step, it may be a half step, it may not be the three steps that the local farmer took, but it's still a step in the right direction. And the more that we can support less chemicals, less fertilizers, less all of this, the better off we all are. Granted, you still know that they're taking corners. So basically the public has 30 days to comment on the USDA's proposal to withdraw the rule. Um, quick short article and yeah um, be very wary of the organic you buy uh, support local I don't know how much more I can say about supporting local a lot of great organic things out there it's December 20th right now and we're still buying a ton of local stuff besides the local beef that we buy and, and the local you know the local proteins that we buy we're still buying local broccoli we're buying local cauliflower we're buying of course kale grill goes all winter uh, it's hard to kill kale off um, we're buying cauliflower, bok choy, broccoli, mushrooms, lots and lots of local mushrooms. The mushroom farm that we use, Bulick Farms, you go to the website, you go to the write-ups on the farm, 
very, very organic, but they're not certified organic. They are, they are indeed, from the literature that I can find on them on the, on the internet is they are practicing organic, just not certified organic. And they are the oldest mushroom farm and probably the only commercial mushroom farm left here in the state of New York, six or 700 acres in the Catskills, um, growing cremini, shiitakes, uh, oysters, and portobello mushrooms. We buy from them every week from two separate vendors. Uh, really an awesome product. So yeah, so that's it. Uh, be very wary of the organic you're buying. Support, uh, make decisions after watching this video. Hopefully you're more educated about buying. And happy holidays, everybody. Like I said, it's December 20th. I gotta get back into the kitchen because we're roasting off tons of turkeys for our Christmas Day soup kitchen. And uh, there's plenty of videos of that on my YouTube channel, of the, uh, our Christmas Day soup kitchen. We've been doing since 2003. Please leave your comments, uh, likes uh, below, and I will try to answer them. Thanks very much for watching.